Hello everybody, welcome back again to the Reggae Appreciation Society. In the history of the Reggae genre, no other single individual is endowed with the equal measures of influence, genius, vision, talent and mystery as embodied by the incredible Augustus Pablo. Reggae musicians have always had the defining quality of being colorful, boisterous and outspoken characters. But Augustus Pablo was cut from an entirely different cloth. He was part of a small group of Jamaican artists that can be boldly described as the architects of the island's music as we know it today. He was not only one of the pioneers of roots reggae, but was among the founding fathers of dub. But for all his success and fame, he was a proud introvert who shunned the spotlight and chose to live a reclusive and quiet life in the rural hills outside of Kingston, meditating and praying to Jah. Unlike his peers, who largely lived in the studio and recorded non-stop, Pablo only came up with new music when he was truly inspired by Ja to put out new sound. And whenever he entered the studio, the results were always out of this world. Many of the greatest musicians that we've ever seen have made their preferred instruments their own over the course of their careers. Sly Dunbar owned the drums, Jackie Mitu owned the keyboards, Chuck Berry owned the guitar, Stevie Wonder owned the harmonica, and Augustus Pablo totally owned the melodica. But where Pablo stands out, even from among that esteemed list, is that while the other instruments were already the most prominent and the standard, Pablo single-handedly converted the melodica from what was essentially a child's toy used to teach school kids the rudiments of music to a powerful instrument that pierced even the hardest root rhythms with devastating results and created some of the greatest reggae tunes that have ever been produced. Augustus Pablo went from a sickly teenager that failed to pass an audition with Coxon Dodd Studio One to one of the most pivotal figures that the reggae genre has ever seen. Now without further ado, let's take a look at the great Augustus Pablo. The life of this mysterious maestro began as Horace Swaby, born on June 21st, 1953 in St. Andrews, Jamaica. Unlike most reggae artists in his time, he was from a comfortable middle-class family as his father was a prominent lawyer of Indian extraction. He grew up in the plush middle-class suburb of Havendale in Kingston. His mother owned a piano and was a good player. It was this factor that sparked his interest in music. He attended the prestigious Kingston College and also had classmates that were crazy about music. Young Horace bonded with them on their common interests and they would often sneak to the school chapel to practice on the school's organ. These friends of his included Tyrone Downey, Sparrow Martin and Ralph Holding who all went on to become successful musicians in their own right. But it was one of these classmates named Clive Chin that would help launch young Horace into the music industry later on in life. In 1968, the musical scene in Jamaica was literally exploding with energy and the then 15 year old had caught the bug. He was a sickly teenager who suffered physical difficulties that forced him to drop out of school. But he still stuck to music and began to organize neighborhood dances with a small sound system that he and his brother had set up as a way to make money. They called this sound system Rockers, a name that would eventually come to signify the pinnacle and essence of Roots Reggae. Young Horace also began to approach producers to record for them and by the age of 15, he was a great keyboardist and a wizard with the melodica. He approached Studio One for an audition but Coxon Dodd just wasn't impressed with his music. But he kept on his grind and kept shopping for a break. An opening came courtesy of his old schoolmate Clive Chin. Clive was part of the Chin clan and the son of Vincent Chin, the founder of popular Randy's record store in Kingston. Another member of the Chin clan was Herman Chin Loy, who was also a cousin of producer Leslie Kong and had worked for his famous cousin for a few years before striking out to establish his own outfits, Aquarius record store and studios. So in 1970, young Horace walked into Herman Chin Loy's store to ask for an audition and being a friend of Clive Chin, he was given a chance to show his skills in the studio. He brought a melodica with him, which he had borrowed from his schoolmate. Herman Chin Loy had never seen it before and out of curiosity, he asked the lad to step into the recording booth. And when the tapes began to roll, there was no doubt that the kid was onto something very special. Despite everyone in the studio pouring scorn on the strange sounding instrument, Herman loved the sound and the result of that recording session was the song Higgy Higgy that was released under the name Augustus Pablo, a moniker that Herman Chin Loy had often used for instrumentals released under his label. Herman Chin Loy's foresight 
saw him record several successful singles such as Still Yet, The Mood and Pablo at Home, all brilliant tracks with Pablo's laid-back and ethereal melodica, perfect foil for the excellent rhythms. Pablo would join Mikey Chung's band, Now Generation, as a keyboardist for a while and after some time, he moved from Aquarius to join forces with Clive Chin, who had by then established his own label, Impact Records. Clive had put together a rhythm meant for a singer, but when the said singer's vocals didn't make the cut, Pablo came to the rescue with some mesmerizing melodica play and the result of that session turned out to be the smash hit named Java, a seminal work that was rated best instrumental in Jamaica in 1972 and is still regarded as one of the greatest of all time. After releasing a slew of beautiful tracks like the flawless cassava piece, he released his debut album titled This Is Augustus Pablo in 1974, a lovely collection of songs and was the first of his many masterpieces. His startling and awesome use of the melodica popularized that instrument in Jamaica and even inspired the likes of Glenn Brown, Leroy Horsemouth Wallace and even Peter Tosh to give the instrument a go on their own records. In that period, Pablo and his brother established the Rockers record label and one of the first artists that they recorded was Jacob Miller, who they had first discovered hanging around Studio One some years earlier. By 1975, Pablo had begun to collaborate with the inventor of dub, King Toby, and that collabo unleashed the phenomenal Ital Dub album, an album that wasn't just among the earliest in that genre, but one that helped drag dub into the mainstream of reggae music. In that same year, Pablo discovered a young singer named Human Dell and took the boy under his wing, quickly becoming his teacher, mentor and producer. Pablo was extremely busy heading into the late 1970s, not only as an artist but as a producer crafting an unbelievable stream of hits for the likes of Gino Delgado, I Roy, Jacob Miller, Human Dell and so many more including Fred Locks for whom he produced the classic song Black Star Liner. Pablo's influence was also instrumental to inspiring the making of the Jamaican classic movie Rockers. Rockers movie director and producer Ted Bafalokos had heard reggae for the first time at an Augustus Pablo show in New York in 1975 and fell in love with the genre. The movie even got its name from Pablo's outfits in Rockers sound system and record label. Pablo was supposed to have a big role in the movie but disagreements with Ted Bafalokos kept him out of the flick. He was now among the most sought after producers in Jamaica but still found the time to make amazing music and in 1978, he unleashed his magnum opus in the fabulous East of the River Nile album that was recorded at Lee Scratch Perry's Black Ark Studios. Pablo's form in the 70s was simply unstoppable. He was not only a phenomenon in Jamaica but his music was literally setting the world alight with Europe, Japan and the US having his strongest fan bases. But when the tours and concerts were over, Pablo would disappear into his home in the hills near Golden Spring on the outskirts of Kingston. Unlike his peers who dressed flashy, lived in mansions, drove the best cars and moved around with large entourages, Pablo maintained the piety and simple existence in line with his profound Rastafarian faith. By the 1980s, the huge shift in musical tastes from roots to dance hall saw his imperious form take a little dip and after four solid albums, between 1980 and 1983, he took a little break from recording, waiting for inspiration from Ja, and made a comeback in 1986 with the amazing Rising Sun album. The album was a monster hit that reignited his dominance. In that same year, he produced the hit album titled Ragamuffin Year for Junior Delgado. He kept releasing material into the 1990s and was also very busy as a producer. Since the beginning of his career, he had notched a superhuman level of output despite severe health challenges which he had experienced since he was a young boy. But in his last days, he was terribly frail but kept on working and turned out material that was consistently of great quality. But sadly, on the 18th of May 1999, the great Augustus Pablo passed on at the age of 46 and went down as one of the most influential people to ever emerge in Jamaican music. An excellent artist, musician, session instrumentalist, producer, sound system operator, mentor, role model and so many things to so many people. Aside from Sly and Robbie, he is among the most ubiquitous personalities in Jamaican music. It was after he died that the true extent of his status and influence began to be revealed, starting from the year after his death when numerous stars featured at the tribute concerts. 
The lineup of these stars that turned up to pay tribute to Pablo included many of Jamaica's greatest singers, DJs, and instrumentalists. Even more than two decades after his death, previously unheard music from Pablo's vaults is still being released, with the most recent being 2022's Lightning and Thunder. There's still so much that we don't know about the person and life of the mysterious man who was born uptown but chose to live his pattern life in the hills. But one thing we are sure of is that his phenomenal body of work speaks for him as one of the true legends of Jamaican music. So there you have it. Thank you for watching the video today. Please leave a like, subscribe, and until next time, Jobless.